Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is another section of People by Four. And I have a special guest here today. Do you mind introducing yourself, please? I am Marlena Murphy, and I am a community advocate and clinical mental health counselor with Turning Point Breast Cancer Rehabilitation. Amazing, amazing. So Marlena is a breast cancer survivor, and she's here today to talk about the story. Mind you, we're sharing one microphone and the microphone decided to go off the beat today. So I just have one working one, so bear with me guys. <laughs> Alright, so I have a few questions for you. The first question is, how did it start? At what point did you realize you had cancer? And what were the symptoms? So, um, for me, uh, the symptom was actually feeling a lump in my left breast, kind of on the side of it. And this was in May of 2018 when I felt it and contacted my primary care provider. Um, once I contacted my primary care provider, they asked me to come in and um, she felt it. And it, it didn't move or anything like that. It was, it was literally a lump. I was doing my normal uh, monthly breast checks in the shower and I actually could only feel the lump when my arm was lifted up. So I couldn't feel it when it was down but I could feel it when I was lifting my arm up. So, you know, it's just important to be able to, when you're checking your breasts, to check in all types of ways, up, down, your arms, on the side, or whatever, because you never know um, what you may feel. And for me, I was, you know, very aware of my body and what was normal, what was not. And feeling that lump, I knew something was not right. And that was 2018 when I was originally diagnosed. And so when I was diagnosed, it was stage three, triple negative breast cancer. And then fast forward, I had a recurrence in 2022, um, March, and it was a different symptom. My left breast had been swollen, but then eventually I felt a pain under my right armpit. And I didn't even know that a swollen breast was a symptom of any kind of breast cancer. But I soon found out that it is a symptom of one other type of breast cancer, which is inflammatory. So I'm thinking, oh my goodness, do I have inflammatory breast cancer? You know, what's going on? But um, when I felt the, the pain under my right armpit, it was like a little pinball, sound like a pinball machine, like a pinball feel. And that area moved, which was completely different from when I first experienced breast cancer. It was a lump, it wasn't going anywhere, it was, it was just there. And so ultimately, I was diagnosed again, and so at this point, the diagnosis was metastatic triple negative breast cancer. And so, paying attention to your body, you just never know. You have to know what is normal, what's abnormal, and when you feel something, you shouldn't be feeling any kind of lump. When you feel something, unless you traditionally have lumpy breasts, then you want to make sure you go and, and get checked out. So I was adamant about that. Alright, so you said it was metastatic because it had one breast. But you don't have it in any of like the nodes or none of that. So basically that's what it did. It moved to the lymph node. So it went from the left breast and it returned to the left breast. As far as we know, it's a return. We don't know for sure if it's a new breast cancer or if it was something that was just left and it wasn't picked up, but it was in the left and then moved to the right armpit. And so with the right armpit, that is the left node for sure. So not even, what's weird is it's not even at the right, in the right breast, is under the arm, which is just, crazy so you know I don't know if if it traveled through the lymphatic system if it if it's just a brand new breast cancer that decided to just pop up under your armpit I don't know but yes traditionally when you hear metastatic you hear about a cancer um, breast cancer being in a different organ um, it could be brain or the liver or lung or your bones and so that, that did not happen to me. Um, it became metastatic because it went to a completely different area 
than what it was originally. Okay, so my second question, what changed for you? How did you react to the news? And what, what, what were your first thoughts when you found out? I can definitely tell you my first thoughts. For the second time, I was pissed off. <laughs> I was so angry um, because I knew what it took when when I had a diagnosis before. And when I had the diagnosis before, I think it was it was shock. I was I felt surprised, um, completely stunned because to my knowledge, I did not have any family history at all. I soon found out that I did have a few family members who had had breast cancer, but you know, not my mom or um, you know anyone like that. So the first time I was surprised, <laughs> the next time I was pissed off because I know that with treatment, the main thing that it does is it takes so much time. It takes time from your life. And so the first time I had chemo, I had a lumpectomy, you had to recover from surgery. I had radiation. Radiation was Monday through Friday um, from April, this is 2019 at this point, April through June. And so just the time that it takes, I was so pissed. I was like, I don't have time for this. And at that time, last year, I was in grad school full time. And I knew I was also gonna be approaching an internship. So I was gonna have class, I was gonna have internship, and then I have a teenage daughter. So, you know, just I was really just angry in regards to this, the current diagnosis. Cause I just felt like I didn't have time for it. When I'm gonna have time to go to treatment. But time passed, treatment ended up being on the day that I didn't really have anything. I did, but I was able to maneuver my schedule. And um, I've been receiving treatment every three weeks. It started off two weeks on, one week off. But about since January, I've been receiving treatment every three weeks. Usually on Thursdays, which I just kind of didn't work out. But this is annoying. This is, which is funny to say a little bit, but it is. It's annoying because it just takes so much time away from things that you actually want to be doing. Nobody wants to go to the hospital and get chemo or immunotherapy, you know. But that I was pissed. I was like, what about the first time you found out? And coming back to this time, um, actually, I'll leave that question for the next one. So, what about the first time when you found out when you were newly diagnosed? So, when I was newly diagnosed, <clears throat> I was surprised, um, and I was I was also kind of nervous to tell my friends and family because when you hear you have breast cancer. For me, it was, it's almost like a death sentence. Now fast forward, I know that just because you have cancer, it doesn't mean that's how you pass away. But traditionally, with most people, and me included, when I heard that it was breast cancer, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. I have a daughter, and at that time she was 11. She was, let's see, it would've been the summer, she was going to sixth grade. So about to start middle school. So, you know, really my concern was for my daughter, not necessarily for myself. Of course, yes, I want to be able to survive, but it was, how is she going to take it? You know, what, how, what, what is she going to be feeling? What is she going to be experiencing when I finally tell her? So I was nervous to tell my daughter. Remember I had one of my um, church members to help me tell her because that church member had experienced breast cancer twice at that point. And so she was able to help me tell my daughter. I was kind of like scared to tell my daughter. Like, oh. And she was, I remember when I told her, she was like, I said, how you feel? And she was like, I'm mad because you should have been told me. I'm like, I didn't know how to tell you, you know. So, but eventually she, you know, was okay with the fact that I had help telling her. Um, but yeah, it, it was just shocking. It, it wasn't anything that I was ever, ever expecting to hear. I was a person who went to the doctor once a year for my annual physicals and never had any issue 
never had any concern to me. I was healthy. And so it was just a complete shock for me. When I felt the lump, I was second guessing myself. I'm feeling it. I'm like, okay. And I felt the other side. I'm like, okay, nothing's there. I kept going back and forth because I'm like, surely this is not a lump. And literally, you know, people say, oh, you feel a lump. I literally felt a lump. And I was just like, this is crazy. But then I also knew that when people feel a lump, it's not always cancer. In fact, a lot of times it's not cancer. So then there was that. They was like, okay, yeah, so I feel a lump. But that doesn't mean it's going to be any kind of cancer. It's not going to be cancerous. So it, it was a complete shock when I originally found out that it was actually breast cancer. And then the other thing that was shocking was that it was a type of breast cancer. Because at that point, I think in general, like most people, you hear about October being Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And so I was aware that breast cancer existed. However, I didn't know there were multiple types of breast cancer. And so when they told me triple negative breast cancer, I'm like, what? And then they said stage three. And I'm like, what? First of all, who knew there was multiple types? And so my oncologist told me triple negative and how it's a more aggressive form of breast cancer and they have to act fast. It was just like, wait a minute, this is a lot. This is, this is too much. Just from going to thinking I'm healthy and then all of a sudden I have this breast cancer that's one of the most aggressive forms. Completely shocked. Completely shocked. All right, so you started, like, my next question was I was asking Louise. So how did your family and friends take it? And did you feel, did you feel the need to, I know you said you got help to talk to your daughter, but, like, did you feel the need to, like, talk about it in public, like, to, to your friends and family, you know, or was it something you just didn't want to talk about? So... One of the first people I told was my best friend, um, who lives in D.C. And I felt safe telling her because her mom had actually passed from cancer. It wasn't breast cancer. But she had experienced, um, you know, her mom's death. And so I felt comfortable telling her. And then there were other friends and family members that I knew I had to tell myself directly whether it was on the phone because they weren't here or in person. And so I, f I found myself consoling them when I had to tell them. I mean, that was very real. And it was almost like I felt kind of bad having to tell them because I knew they would be sad. And so I did, I found myself like kind of consoling my family and friends when I had to tell them. But <clears throat> originally I was gonna be kind of private because I, I tend to be a private person before breast cancer and <laughs> it was like one thing after another my car faithful Toyota Camry my car needed a new engine this is all during the time when I was diagnosed and that's like thousand plus dollars that I did not pay I remember telling one of my friends and she was like, you need to do a GoFundMe. And you basically need to tell everybody that you're going through a breast cancer diagnosis. And I'm like, uh, yeah, nah. <laughs> I'm not trying to do that. I'm, mm -mm. And she was like, you need to put it on Facebook. I'm like, uh, yeah, mm-mm. I'm not doing that. I'm too private. There's no way I'm letting all these people in my business. And so, ultimately, um, it was my best friend. It was another friend. Like, it was at least three people that insisted that yeah that's what I should do so I did it I put my story out there just because of the GoFundMe that I set up and at that point people knew and basically I was I don't know if I was too surprised but I, I guess I was surprised at like the overwhelming support financially and just people reaching out People that I went to elementary school with, junior high school, high school, college, like all these different people. So I, I really felt loved and I really felt like me telling people was the right thing to do. And then really me telling people also helped me to be able to meet other women who had experienced breast cancer diagnosis. So yeah, I, I was going to keep it private, but 
I did. And so now I, I tell my story. I tell it so other people can be aware and have some kind of inspiration and, and be encouraged that even if you have a breast cancer diagnosis, it doesn't mean that your life is going to end. If you have a purpose, we all have a purpose, and you can still fulfill that purpose. That played into me going back to school to, to get the master's in clinical mental health counseling. Like, I'm not going to stop just because I have breast cancer diagnosis. People can still live their lives and, and do what they feel they need to do, even despite a cancer diagnosis. Thank you for sharing that. My next question, tell me about chemo and chemo and radiation. You mentioned that you did radiation. How was the journey mentally, emotionally, spiritually? How, how was how did your journey? So, in general, with chemo, I knew that the, the side effects are you lose your hair, you may have nausea, you may vomit. And so I don't, nobody likes to vomit, but I really, really don't so like, Lord, please, I don't want that to happen. I don't want that. And what do you know? I never felt nauseated. I never had to vomit during chemo. My hair did come out. Um, and one of the things with chemo that first time is part of the chemo that they gave me, I had to have Benadryl. And so this Benadryl, is a Benadryl that basically goes like right to your blood. And so I always had to have somebody to take me to chemo. There was never a time where I could just drive myself, um, not under those circumstances, because you would basically feel like you're hot, like you couldn't function. And so I was fortunate enough to have friends and family, um, my church family, somebody always took me to chemo. So um, I would say I felt fatigued, slightly but you know the hair fell out um and and pretty much i would rest i would do a lot of resting when i was on chemo that first time around and then the radiation the radiation for me is what brought on the fatigue and the fatigue was so intense where so with radiation it's it's quick you're in and out maybe like 30 minutes and it's monday through friday so the first couple of times i think somebody did probably take me but then once I realized, okay, this, <clears throat> this is not bad. This is just quick. I started joking myself. But ultimately, that fatigue hit. And I was like, oh my gosh. Please let me get home. Please let me get home. Because you just want to get to your destination and go to sleep. That's how intense the fatigue made me feel when I was under uh, radiation. And then the physical aspect of radiation is that you don't, Feel it you don't feel that you're being radiated but eventually your skin starts to break and it burns basically and it was it was crazy and then once I finished with the radiation I took uh, these chemo pills and so the chemo pills for me my side effects included my hands darken on the inside bottom of my feet were darkening my face darkened and then it would make my heart race. And it would do it like if I had to walk, not even like a power walk, just, just like walking in general, maybe 15 minutes. Let's say a 15 minute straight walk. And then my heart would start racing and I would have to like sit down and wait till it stopped. And so the key moment for me during that time was a friend asked me to, to walk up Stone Mountain. And I had never been to Stone Mountain. I was excited. I was like, oh yeah, because I like going on walks. I like being outside with the walking. And I like trail walks and nature walks and those things. So I was excited. And I couldn't even get halfway up the day on mountain because my heart started racing. And so I told my friend, just go on and I'll just wait here. So you can like sit down, whatever it's like stone. So that's what I did, but I didn't realize how impactful that was until I had a follow-up appointment with my nurse practitioner at my radiation oncologist's office. And I was telling her the story about, you know, oh, I tried to climb up Stone Mountain, but I couldn't because my heart, blah, blah, blah. And I started busting out crying, like 
like boohoo crying as I'm telling her the story. And so she's like, has you ever talked to a social worker? I said, no, I know who she is, but I never talked to her. She's I'm gonna get her in here. So she left out, social worker came back, <clears throat> telling her the story, crying, boohoo crying about not being able to climb up Stone Mountain. So she asked me, had I talked to a therapist? And I was like, no, because at this point, me taking the chemo pills, it was the end of my treatment. So I'm like, no, I'm good. I got through chemo and back to me, radiation. I'm, you know, done with these pills just about. And she was like, I'm gonna give you talk to the therapist. I was like, okay. And so she told me what to do, look at my insurance, look that person up or those people up. A website called Psychology Today. And so I did, and I, I ended up getting a therapist because I did not know the impact that breast cancer was having on my mental and emotional state. You know, you kind of go, 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 and you're going to these appointments, and you know, you're checking off the list. Okay, I'm doing the chemo, check. I'm doing this, check. And so, although you have time to sit down and relax, you don't have time to sit down and think about how you're actually dealing with this whole process. Because for me, the process was so new and so different. Mind you, I was only used to going to the doctor once a year. And when I got diagnosed, I had appointments, some kind of medical appointment every single week. Other, I've never been in this one. Other than, so I was diagnosed in June 2018. I started treatment in August. And so between those two months, I had a medical appointment of some type every week other than July 4th. And then when I started chemo, that was every other week for a certain number of weeks. And then it was every week. I remember that every week was like 12 weeks in a row. So I go from just one, once a year seeing a doctor, one kind of medical appointment to like every week seeing a, a medical professional. So it, it, it had a toll on me mentally and emotionally. Didn't realize it at the time. But it did, and so I got therapy. And in the meantime, I also started school. That was something that it was, I knew that I should have gone back to school before breast cancer. But when I got the breast cancer diagnosis, it was like, um, yeah, you need to go ahead and go back to school. And so I did, I started back to school August of 2020. And then it was a, it was a three year program. And then of course, in the midst of that was the second diagnosis. And the first therapist I had, I had that person for that season of after treatment into beginning school. But then I like to say you kind of, um, not. it's okay to like transfer therapists. So I had a therapist for one season of my life. And then I knew I needed a therapist for the next season of my life, which was which was school at that point. But yeah, the, the mental and emotional toll that breast cancer um, had on me was, I, I just didn't think about it. And, and none of my doctors mentioned it, which makes sense because they want to make sure that they are actually getting the actual cancer. And kind of, I guess, maybe an afterthought is their mental and emotional health. But it really should be forefront first and foremost in addition to you know the physical treatments that you're getting. All right thank you for that insight. I just have one more question. So I'm sure I can't stress how important uh, the food support system is. What would you like to uh, based on your story as well your friend helping you tell your daughter and you know just having that support system what would you like to see to other survivors and your families that are still going through the process or are just about to start going through the process so one thing that I definitely need to mention is that if you are a believer in a higher power that is something that can strengthen you and so for me as a Christian my belief in God has helped to strengthen me beyond my understanding. And so having a social support system 
um, of family and friends and then having a support system in my spiritual life has been critical and so important for me going through this journey. And so I would say for anyone who just received a diagnosis or you're going through treatment, that you got to have a support system. You got to have um, somebody that you can depend on, some family, some friends, people who can be there with you. Even if it's just, you know, they come to the house and they sit on the couch and y'all just watch TV. You know, you have to have some kind of social support. And again, for me, for me personally, it, it completely helped to have a spiritual life and a healthy spiritual life. Not just, you know, okay, I'm just going to go to church on Sundays. But I made a point to, especially my first time around, I have to, I don't care how I feel, I have to be at church. I have to be a part of a group of people who are like-minded. I have to fellowship with my church members. And so that for me was was critical to be able to get me through um, the journey both times, even currently. I mean, my church, they prayed for me. It ain't, it, it ain't nothing like some intercessory prayer. I mean, you could pray for yourself, but to have other people praying for you, whether that's friends, family, a church member, it is so critical to just have other people in your system and around you. My daughter's school at the time, the teachers, the parents, they were a huge support system, not just for her, but for me too. There were plenty of times where I couldn't pick her up. I couldn't drive to pick her up from school, especially after having treatment. And so that support system. And so wherever you can find people that are willing to be there for you, I say take advantage. Don't, don't take it lightly if somebody says, what can I do for you? Because you know, especially if you have children, you know you may need help with the children. You may need help with meals. I had friends and family um, prepare meals for me. Uh, I remember my cousin came, she washed clothes and folded the clothes. I mean, there's so many tasks that need to be done just in the day-to-day -day life that you could get help with. And so it's, it's critical, it's so critical for you to be able to lean on other people. You're not superwoman, you're not supermen. It is perfectly normal and you should lean on other people for support, even in the most minor thing, that for something you may think is minor. Thank you very much for sharing that. So as a tradition, I like to get the autograph of everyone that I interview on my shirt. So if you would please sign your autograph anywhere on the shirt. All right. So I like to give everyone I can you a crown and a sash. The sash says warrior queen. So this is just to remind you you're a queen, you're a warrior, no matter what life throws at you. Get it before you get it. Okay. So whenever you get in that space where you know feeling, because I know, like you said, this comes with a lot of emotions. And, you know, you have it to see a therapist. If you ever get in that space, I want you to look at your crown. Remind yourself, be your queen. Glad you love it. So, do you have any final words to say to everybody before we close this session? 
So final words, I would say um, that during the month of October, with it being Breast Cancer Awareness, we are aware that breast cancer exists. Um, and if you are a patient or survivor, someone who knows someone, take the time to reach out to one another. Take the time to reach out to someone who's experiencing a breast cancer diagnosis and just see if you can talk to them on the phone or go take them to a movie or go to their house or invite them over. Just spend some quality time with them because the one thing for me during this second diagnosis, what I've asked people for is let's just be normal. Let's just hang out. Let's go eat lunch. Let's go eat dinner. And so to help someone experiencing a breast cancer diagnosis to feel normal, that could be everything. But that's the last thing I want to say. Thank you very much. And thank you so much for coming on my platform. I really enjoyed this session, despite all the backstage issues. But we still made it work. So thank you, everyone, for watching. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.